Lego, don't make a video about this. Lego, don't make a video about this. Lego, don't make a video about this. It's not a story. This is not a story. You shouldn't be talking about this. Oh, screw it. We're going to talk about it. Okay, I hate that we're going over this, but I feel like... It's a cool enough conversation to be talking about it. I know some people are going to get pissed off. Lego, what are you doing? You can't go out there and disregard and slander one of these prospects because another one was better. That doesn't mean that the first guy was a bad player. I know it's just circumstantially. It's kind of funny. So, today we're talking about goaltending, and today we're talking about Minnesota, as well as Detroit. Because if you take a blast back to the past, to the 2021 NHL Entry Draft, you would remember that the goaltending conversation was mostly revolving around one guy. You know, the previous few seasons, we had Yaroslav Askarov and Spencer Knight. These were the unanimous, undisputed number one goaltenders of the class who were going to be elite players. And for the most part, 2021 had another player that was supposed to be in that same caliber, if not better. We're talking about Jesper Wallstead a Swede who had made his pro debut in the SHL literally the year beforehand, and he was one of the best goalies that Sweden had seen in decades. So this guy was kind of hyped up as the top goalie of 2021, but he wasn't the first goalie taken off the board, because in that same 2020-2021 season, we had ourselves a guy in the WHL named Sebastian Kosa, who absolutely went out there and stole the show as an Edmonton Oil Kings goaltender in the CHL. Kosa put himself up a 941 save percentage in 19 games played and a 157 goals against. And as a big dude, a guy with some pretty good mobility and fundamentals of being a goaltender, he was taken first amongst all the goalies in the 2021 draft by the Red Wings in the 15th overall selection. Now, give it a few more picks, and Jesper Wallstead, who had himself a pretty good season as well, he had a 908 save percentage in 22 games played, but he was playing in the SHL, whereas Kosa was playing in the CHL, Wallstead went 20th to the Minnesota Wild. Now, there's an entire Oilers conversation to happen about the Wallstead pick, but no, we're not going to have that in this video here. Long story short, Sebastian Kosa was taken first by Detroit in the 15th spot, Jesper Wallstead was taken 20th, so he's the second goaltender taken by Minnesota, and this recent World Junior saw ourselves a head-to-head -head matchup that wasn't really all too head-to-head, -head. and this article in Detroit Hockey Now kind of sums it up nicely, Jesper Wallstead outplayed Sebastian Kosa. Should Red Wings fans be worrying? The Red Wings prospect Sebastian Kosa sat on the bench while Wallstead was playing in a starring role. This article was published on August 22nd. You can go ahead and click the link in the description if you want to go ahead and read the piece. But Jesper Wallstead at this year's World Juniors was an absolute game changer. In five games played for Team Sweden, he had a 940 save percentage and a 162 goals against. He was 3 2 0. So even though he had these incredible numbers, he still was barely at a winning record. And a lot of people would go out there and say that part of the reason that the Swedes were even in the gold medal conversation for a part of the tournament was because Sebastian Kosa was just that gosh darn good. Like, here's a tweet from Scott Wheeler. Wallstead stopped 125 of the 133 shots he faced in five games in these World Juniors for a 940 save percentage. You also had the defensive system of the Swedes that wasn't really all too great this year. Like, normally, you know, Swedish hockey is good defensive hockey. It wasn't like that this season. The Swedes played a very strange game. A lot of the guys that you expected to produce a lot of points didn't really do so. You had a lot of guys like Emil Andre going out there and producing very well, which is good to see. But... At the end of the day, Jesper Wallstead was really bailing out this Swedish squad to the point that it was really difficult to go out there and say that there was anybody else on this team that should have been named the MVP. Wallstead, as a result, was named the best goaltender of the World Juniors. He was on the All-Star team, he had the best save percentage, and he was a top three player on the Swedish team as well. Meanwhile, you go over onto what Sebastian Kosa did in this year's World Juniors, and he only played one game. He led in two goals, he had a 9.17 save percentage, but he was not the main player for Team Canada at this year's squad. That honor belonged to Dylan Garand, who was a Rangers prospect, he had a 9.25 save percentage at a 1.68, or excuse me, a 1.98 goals against average, and the thing is, with Garand being named the starter over Kosa, it makes a lot of sense in more ways than one. 
Firstly, if you go over to their WHL stats, because Garand plays for the Kamloops Blazers, Sebastian Kosa was on the Oil Kings. Kosa's numbers this season took a pretty big hit in terms of his overall save percentage and goals against. Last year, as we said, he had a 941 and a 157 goals against in 19 games. This previous season, he had a 913 save percentage in 46 games and a 228 goals against. A pretty significant drop off than the numbers that he had the previous year. He also had a 919 save percentage in 19 games as the Oil Kings won the Memorial Cup. Meanwhile, Dylan Garand had a much better save percentage at 925 in 45 games and a 216 goals against instead, so he just was the overall better statistical goaltender. He also had a 933 save percentage and a 192 goals against in the Kamloops Blazers playoff run, which was absolutely crazy. And you also have the fact that Dylan Garand is just older. The previous video we uploaded three hours ago was going over Brennan Othman of the New York Rangers and how he was put in a position where as a younger guy for Team Canada, he wasn't really being played all too much. And that's normally a pattern that we see out of these Canadian World Junior teams, is that the older guys normally get a lot more presidents because they're a lot more experienced, etc, etc. Sure, Mason McTavish and Connor Bedard kind of defy the rule because, yeah, they were really good. But that's normally the pattern we see out of these tournaments. And so for Sebastian Kosa being given that second place role on this team behind Garan, who had a better statistical season than Kosa in the regular season, as well as just being an older guy in general, it makes sense to me. However, it really isn't enough of a factor to go out there and say that, oh, Wallstead was the better pick at 15th overall than Sebastian Kosa was. I mean, Wallstead had a good season himself. He had a 918 save percentage and a 190 goals against in 22 SHL games. So, actually, that's a crazy good season. My goodness. I mean, look, to be fair, to back myself up here, I was actually more so on the Wallstead hype train back in 2021 than I was in the Kosa hype train, but I could understand why Kosa went higher. It's just in the moment, the circumstances of the season and how well, Kosa was playing for the WHL's Oil Kings. It makes sense as to why you would choose the guy, especially since he's bigger. Wallstead's only 6'3", Kosa 6'6". But it is kind of an interesting note that already we're seeing articles like this popping up in Detroit Hockey. Now, let's go ahead and read it, actually, and see what Bob Duff has to say. Okay, he pretty much just summarizes what happened at the World Juniors. Wallstead was dominant. Kosa was on the bench. Is this concerning for the Red Wings? Canada edged out Finland to win the gold. And then it goes over the draft story of a little over a year ago. Red Wings GM Steve Eisman was trading up in the NHL draft, and he acquired Kosa. There also is a pretty interesting part here. It says that World Junior success is not always the pathway to NHL greatness. As much as everyone likes to see their team's prospects shining when on the game's biggest stage, the matter of fact is that it doesn't always mean greatness is blooming. Judging a goaltender's quality off a World Junior performance is akin to writing a 19-year-old netminder off because they didn't step up to the 4. 4? Four? 4A? To the 4A. Okay, yeah, that's a lot better, actually. Looking back at the netminders who are earning golden moments for the World Juniors, there isn't a track record of NHL success on most of these resumes. For every UC Soros, Finland 2014, John Gibson 2013, and Carey Price in 07, there are countless guys like Dimitri Shikin, Jeff Glass, Thomas Duba, and Tyler Parsons. The article then just kind of highlights what else happened at the World Juniors, and so you can go ahead and read it if you want. The article will be linked in the description. But either way, talk to me in the comments what do you think about Sebastian Kosa and him being second, given that backup role being the bench boy on Team Canada as they won gold, and Dylan Garan being named the starter on that team instead. Also, talk to me in the comments, what do you think happened to Kosa this season? Like, I know we've made a few videos here and there talking about Kosa throughout the year, but there isn't really one particular video, I feel, that goes over why his numbers decline from 941 in 2021 to a 913 in 2022. Like, that's a significant drop-off, and sure, he still was a good goaltender, he still had a winning record, it's just statistically, it's definitely not something you would like to see trending in that sort of direction, right? Like, if he declines even more next season, that would be pretty bad. He still was good enough to be on Team Canada, and he was good enough to actually play a game. But when it comes to the comparison versus Wallstead, I mean, look, I know I'm a Red Wings tertiary fan, but I'm going to go out there and say it. I feel like Wallstead is being the better player so far. And uh, yeah, if you were to ask me back in 2021, I probably would have taken Wallstead over Kosa. I was not opposed to the idea of Kosa going ahead. It's just my personal preference was saying Wallstead. But uh, yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking about this entire situation. You can talk to me in the comments like your thoughts and Minnesota Wild fans. I mean, we've kind of been talking about your guy this entire time, but I haven't acknowledged that he is a Minnesota dude. He'll probably be playing in Iowa next year since he is a Swede from Europe. He doesn't have the same CHL restriction into the AHL like some other players like Kosa do. 
But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about Wallstead, about Kosa, about the draft in 2021, about the selection of Kosa over Wallstead, and the fact that both these guys were present at the World Juniors in August. What do you think about their performances? What do you think about their player profiles and their projections as prospects as well? I hope you enjoyed this Vritraj Rolls 99. And bye. <laughs>